Okay, we're going to be covering uh, 4.3 in our math analysis book, right triangle trig, with a little bit from 4.4. So again, 4.3, math analysis uh, book, uh, right triangle trig. So again, we're doing um, 4.3, right triangle trig, and a little bit from 4.4, which is um, trigonometry dealing with other angles than just ones in the right triangle. So if you want to look at um, the notes that I sent out, I sent out a unit circle as an attachment. So if you want to either print it out and refer to it, or if you want to do it on your phone or on a tablet, you can also edit it that way. So we're going to fill out this unit circle and then we're going to be taking some notes in our composition book. So again, if you want to get that out, um, it's on my Google Classroom um, for the notes for 4.3, right triangle trig. So a unit circle is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of one. So as I come out this direction, I'm going out one. So this is one comma zero. Okay, so that's by definition what a unit circle is. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill in our degrees because that was the first thing we've learned. And so all of these are going to be our degrees. So this is going to be zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. And then up here, this is our 90 degrees. Then on the other side, when you're doing this, sometimes it's helpful, let me just zoom in a little bit more. Sometimes it's helpful to think of how far above or how far below the x-axis you're going. Now, if I go all the way to here, halfway around the circle, this is 180 degrees. So if this is 30 degrees above, this is 30 degrees above, so 30 degrees above 180, would be 150 degrees. Now this is 45 degrees above, so this will be 45 degrees above, so you can take 180 minus 45. Another way to think about it, if you'll notice over here, 30, 45, there's 15 between it, and 15 between 60 and 45, because 45 is halfway between these. So usually what I'll do is I'll think about the 150, and I'll be taking 15 off of that, which puts me at 135 degrees. So now this one is 60. This one is 60 above. So this is going to be 120. Now, before I go down to the ones on the bottom, I'm just going to kind of start to color code things for us. OK, so. The angles in quadrant one, these are our reference angles. So 30 degrees is going to be the reference angle for this one over here, which is 150 degrees. It's also going to be the reference angle, if I push this down, this would be 30 degrees below. This one over here is going to be 30 degrees below. So all of these angles are going to have 30 degrees as its reference. Okay, now let me do another color and we'll do the same with the 45. So this is 45 degrees. This one over here again has 45 degrees as if as its reference angle because it's 45 above. And then this is going to be 45 below. And over here on this side again, that's going to be 45 below. And now let's do our 60 degree, okay? So let's say, is this color? So here's our 60 degrees. Over here, this 120 refers to 60 degrees. That's its reference angle. And down here, this is going to be 60 degrees 
below, and this one's going to be 60 degrees below. Okay, so now let me kind of go around and finish filling in the unit circle. Okay, Re realizing that everything in purple is 30 degrees above or 30 degrees below. Everything in green is 45 above or 45 below. And same with the blue, six degrees above or 60 degrees below. So over here, okay, this is my 30 degrees. So I'm gonna go 30 degrees beyond 180, which is gonna push me to 210 degrees. And um, over here, this is going to be 45. Okay, so I can either add 45 onto this and get 225, or remember it's going to be 15 degrees difference here. So this is going to be 225 degrees. Now my blue one again, 60 degrees. So if I take 60, add it onto 180, I'm going to be at 240 degrees. Okay, now I did not do this one at the top. Well, I did, it's 90 degrees, but I didn't match it with anything. So that 90 degrees, is going to be matching up with this one down here. Okay. So this one here, you'll notice is 30 degrees from here or 90 degrees from here. Okay, so either 30 from here or 90 from here. So this is going to push this to 270. And now I'm going to fill up this side. So um, this one here, as I go this way, this is 360 degrees all the way around the circle. So going back to here, 360. This one is going to be 30 degrees off. So I'm going to be at 330. This one is going to be 45 degrees off or 15 off of this, which pushes me to 315. This one is going to be 60 degrees off of 360, which is 300 degrees. Okay, so that is all of the, let me zoom out, that is all of the angles, okay, in terms of degrees. Now let's talk about the angles in terms of radians, okay. So, what you want to remember is that when we're doing this, we have pi six, we have pi fourths, we have pi thirds, and then we have our pi halves and our pi. Um, this one here is pi six. Sometimes people get pi six and pi thirds mixed up. But if you think about this being like a pizza, okay, so if I'm taking this half and I'm splitting it into six pieces, Okay, 30 degrees, there's six 30s and 180, so I have six of these. This is one six or pi six. Another way to think about it is I just, I remember three doesn't go with three and six doesn't go with six. So the pi six does not go with the 60. It goes here. This is our pi six, okay, which means this one is my pi thirds. And this one here is going to be my pi fourths. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit. Okay. So again, there are six thirties in 180. So I'm splitting this 180 or pi because going all the way around here is pi. So this would be pi. Over here, my zero degrees is zero radians. Okay, so this is 180. 80 degrees, but it's also pi radians. So as I'm taking my 30 into 180, I have six. I'm splitting pi into six pieces. That's why this is a pi six. 45 goes into 180 four times. So that's why this is a pi fourth. 60 goes into 180 three times. That's why it's a pi thirds. Now the colors are going to help us match these up. So if this is pi, this is going to be pi six above. So I think of pi as six pi six when I'm dealing with pi six, okay? Because six over six is one. So six pi six, and I'm off by one pi six. This is 
5 pi 6. Okay. And then down here, let me just do all my pi 6. If this is 6 pi 6, now I'm going pi 6 this direction. So I'm going to be at 7 pi 6. Now, again, pi is really 6 pi 6. So going all the way around to here would be 2 pi, but it's also 12 pi 6. So if that's 12 pi 6 and I'm short 1 6, this is 11 pi 6. Okay. So when I'm doing this, a lot of times I'll think of my pi and my 2 pi in terms of whatever denominator I'm dealing with. So now if I'm dealing with my green one, my pi force, pi would be 4 pi force. So if I'm short by 1, that means I'm at 3 pi force. And then if I go 1 pi fourth beyond, that means I'm at 5 pi force. Okay. So again, that was 4 pi force. I went 1 pi fourth below, 5 pi force. Now, if this is 4 pi force, then all the way around, this is 8 pi force. So if I'm short by a fourth, that means I'm at 7 pi force. Okay, now my blue. So my blue is my pi thirds. So again, think of this as 3 pi thirds. And I'm short by a third, so this is 2 pi thirds. And again, this is three pi thirds. And going the other direction, I'm going one third beyond three pi thirds, which makes it four pi thirds. Now, if this is three pi thirds, then all the way around would be six pi thirds. So this is going to be five pi thirds. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is we need to figure, fill in all of our coordinates. So again, this is a unit circle. So what that means is we are starting at zero, zero. We're going out one unit, so this is one comma zero. If I go up here, this is going to be zero comma one. If I go this direction, I'm going negative one comma zero. And if I'm going down, Okay, I'm going zero. Oh, and I didn't write this one in here, sorry. Um, so this is going to be zero, negative one. Now, in terms of this, this one is dealing with this. Okay, this is half of pi. So this is pi halves. Okay, I forgot my pi halves. And this would be two pi halves, which means this is going to be three pi halves, and then going all the way here would be four pi halves, okay? So these ones are kind of your easy ones to fill in, okay? One comma zero, negative one comma zero, zero negative one, zero one. Now, these ones we saw the other day were 30, 60, 90 right triangle, 45, 45, 90, uh, again, a 30, 60, 90. And we saw that the values we have, and I'm just gonna jot this at the very tip top here, we ended up getting a one half, a root two halves, and root three halves. That's what we got. Now, the way I remember this is, if you look at the, they're all halves, so let's look at the numerators. This is one. Root two would be about a 1.4. Root three would be about a 1.7. So this is the shortest. So I think of this as short, this one as medium, and this one as long, okay? Now, your median is going to be with the 45, because the 45 is going to be, if we look at the distance, this is going to be the longest distance to get to here. This is going to be a middle distance to get to here. And this one's going to be a shorter distance okay, in terms of my x. And this one here, 45, 45, was in isosceles right triangle. So 
this one is going to have my root two halves. Okay, that's going to be my medium. So this one here, if I'm thinking about how I'm moving, I'm moving long, comma, short. So long is my root three halves, and short is my one half. This one here is going to be medium, comma, medium. It's the one in the middle. So it's root two halves, comma, root two halves. Okay, your 45s or your pi fours are always the same coordinates, but maybe the signs will be different depending on what quadrant. So this one here, I'm going short, comma, long. So short is one half, and long would be root three halves. Okay, now all of these coordinates are going to be the same. All the blue ones are going to have the same x and y's, but the signs are going to be different. All the green ones are going to have the same, but the signs are different, and same with the purple. So just a little reminder, or a little note here, so we understand when we're doing this, that in this quadrant here, okay, in this quadrant here, let me get a different color. All of my points in this quadrant are going to be positive, comma, positive. Positive x, positive y. All of the ones in this quadrant are going to be negative x, positive y, okay? All of the ones in quadrant three, I'm going negative, comma, negative. So these are gonna be negative, comma, negative. And these ones over here, I'm going positive, comma, negative. So this is gonna be positive, comma, negative. So what that means is when I'm filling all of these out, all of my purple ones, again, will be the same coordinates, but the signs are gonna change. So over here, this is going to be, and let me just kind of say it to remind us, long comma short, okay? So long, but it's gonna be a negative. So negative root three half, short, one half. So that's a negative root three halves comma one half. I'll zoom in slightly, a little bit more. Okay, so on this one here, this is my middle one. I'm going to go short, negative. I mean, not short, sorry, medium, medium, but this one's going to be negative. So it's going to be a negative root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. This one here, I'm going to go short, comma, long. Again, my x is negative, so short negative one half, long, root three halves. And you'll see that they're all the same, but the signs are different. That's how it's gonna be also on the bottom, okay? So here, again, this one is gonna be long, comma, short, and all these are negative, comma, negative. So long, that's negative in front, comma, short. This one, is gonna be medium, medium, negative root two halves, comma, negative root two halves. This one here is gonna be short, comma, long. So short, comma, long. Again, that's negative when you put it out, so you kind of see it there. Now on this side, all these are gonna be positive x, negative y. So if I'm coming to this one here, again, we always start at the origin, long, comma short. So it's going to be root three halves, comma, negative one half. And then I'm going to go medium, comma, medium. So negative root two halves, negative root, sorry, this one's a positive. Getting carried away here. Okay, so this is positive, positive, comma, negative. Now this one here is going to be short, comma, long. Short, comma, long. And then just pay attention to the signs. Okay, so let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And we need to be able to fill something like this out without any help, okay? You need to know all of these values, okay? So now we're going to go into our composition book. And I would probably put this in my composition book so you have it as a reference. Um, but we're gonna start taking some notes on 4.3.
So this is going to be 4.3 math analysis. Okay, 4.3 math analysis. Right triangle trig. So again, if you have your pre-calc book with you, because um, we did check them out before school closed, um, you can be referring to your pre-calc book. This is section 4.3 in your pre-calc book. Okay, if you didn't check out the book beforehand, that's okay, because I'll be giving us notes and I'll be giving us worksheets, but it's also a reference if you do have it. Okay, so just a little reminder. Draw a right triangle. And let's say that this is theta. And this, if this is theta, then this is opposite. This side is adjacent. This side is hypotenuse. And just remember our little saying, so patoa, okay, so patoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to write those down, and then I'm also going to write down the reciprocals. And then we talked about this the other day, but let's make sure we get it in our composition book. So this is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. Now remember, we have reciprocals of each of these. And the way I remember it is S doesn't go with S and C doesn't go with C. So the other ones are your cosecant, your secant, and your cotangent. But since this is S, it's not going to go to the secant because that's an S. It's going to go to cosecant, the cosecant theta. And so cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of this. So it's going to be hypotenuse over opposite. And my cosine, again, C doesn't go with C. So it's going to go with the S, which is secant, secant theta. And so this is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. And our tangent and our cotangent are reciprocals. So the cotangent of theta is going to be the reciprocal of this, which is adjacent over opposite. OK? Now, I'm also going to talk about this in terms of it being on the unit circle. We need to know it like this in case it isn't on a unit circle. Um, and if your hypotenuse is not one, it's not on a unit circle, okay, because the radius is your hypotenuse. Um, but let's talk about it on a unit circle, like the one we just drew or just filled in earlier. Okay, so if this is a unit circle, Okay, here's my circle. Okay, and let me just put that this is 1, 0. This would be 0, 1. This would be negative 1, 0. This would be 0, negative 1. Okay, now any other point on this, okay? So let's just, I'm just picking a random point here, okay? Now, this point is x, y. So to get here, I'm going, let me get a different color pen. To get here, I'm going x, y, okay? So if this is my angle right here, then this is my, and my hypotenuse is my radius, which is one. So I can write all of these values on a unit circle in terms of x and y. So my sine, of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse and opposite over hypotenuse y over one is y so sine of theta is y again this is when it's on a unit circle radius one 
cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over 1, which is x. Tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so y over x. Now, if we're talking about the reciprocals again, okay, remember the reciprocal sign is not an S. So it's going to be cosecant, cosecant theta. And the reciprocal of y or y over 1 is 1 over y. Cosine, the reciprocal of cosine is secant. And so if this is x over 1, then this is 1 over x. And then your tangent, its reciprocal is cotangent. And so the reciprocal of y over x is x over y. Okay, so on a unit circle, you can think of all of these values in terms of the x and the y coordinates. One other thing I want to just make a note of is the following. So tangent is really equal to sine over cosine, okay? Now, if you want to know why is it equal to sine over cosine, um, let me just work out here what sine theta over cosine theta is, just to show you guys. Well, sine theta okay, is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, remember, when I am dividing by a fraction, I can multiply by the reciprocal. So I start with my opposite over hypotenuse. But instead of dividing it by this fraction, I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal. So hypotenuse over adjacent. And you see how those cancel out. And I get opposite over adjacent, which is tangent. So that's why your tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Now, if your tangent is equal to sine over cosine, that means your cotangent is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. Okay, so now let's try some problems. Now that we've got kind of all of the, those um, definitions written out for us, okay? So let's say, for example, we have the following. So this is going to be on a, a right triangle. It's not going to be on a unit circle. Okay, our hypotenuse, which is would be our radius, is not going to be one. And they want to find the exact values. That means we're not using our calculators. You're going to give me um, a fraction or maybe a radical with a fraction type answer, not a decimal. So find the exact values of the six trig functions of the angle theta. Okay, so we're going to have a right triangle. Here is theta. Let's say they give us six and they give us eight. Okay, now I need to make sure I know all three sides of this because sometimes I might need to know my opposite and hypotenuse, sometimes I might know, need to know my adjacent hypotenuse and so forth. I don't know my hypotenuse. But I can do Pythagorean, or some of us might recognize this as a three, four, five. So this is actually going to be 10. But again, if you did not recognize that, then you could have done six squared plus eight squared equals c squared and worked it out. Um, now, Let's do all six of these, sine theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, and then I'll do the reciprocals. So sine theta is opposite over, I'm um, sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 6 over 10, and I can reduce that down to 3 over 5, and that is my sine of this angle. Don't know what the angle is? but I can figure it out because I can figure out all the sides of the triangle. Cosine theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so eight over 10, and that's gonna reduce down to four 
this. Tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So six over eight, which reduces down to three fourths. Now I can find the reciprocals. Okay, so again, S doesn't go with S, so this is going to be cosecant. And so let's take the reduced one. So the reciprocal of three fifths is five thirds. The reciprocal of cosine is going to be secant. And so the reciprocal of four fifths is five fourths. And my tangent, it's going to be cotangent for the reciprocal. And I take the reciprocal of three fourths, which is four thirds. So I was able to find all six of these trig functions without knowing the angle because I knew two sides of the right triangle and I could find the third. Okay, that's what they're talking about with this right triangle trig. Okay, so next example. Similar one. Okay, so let's say that here we have theta. Let's say this time they give us our hypotenuse and we know our opposite, but we don't know our adjacent, okay? Now, you can do Pythagorean theorem for this and you can go, I'm gonna call this x because it's kind of in the x direction. So two squared plus x squared equals four squared. So I'm gonna get x squared equals 16 minus four when I take that over. So I get x squared is equal to 12. So x is going to equal the square root of 12, which I can clean up. It's a root four times a root three. Okay, and it's a root two times a root six, but that's not helpful. I wanna look for a square and four is a square. And that equals two root three. Now, some of us might have recognized this because my hypotenuse is four and this is half of it. This is actually a 30, 60, 90. Okay, so this is a two root three, a two root three, okay? So now we're gonna find the six trig functions, okay? So we're gonna find sine theta, which is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, two over four, which reduces to one half, which is what, again, this would be my, in terms of this being a 30, 60, 90, this would be my 30, because it's across from one, it's half of your hypotenuse. And sine of 30 on our unit circle was one half. Okay, so even if we're not dealing with this, they all will reduce down to the same ratios that I would have on the unit circle. The only difference is a lot of the ones we're gonna deal with are nice ones on our unit circle. Okay, the one we did before on the last example wasn't, this one is. This one ends up being a 30 degree angle. Um, but that doesn't always happen. So cosine theta um, is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So two root three over four, and I can reduce two from top and bottom and I get my root three over two, okay, which we saw on our unit circle. And then our tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So two over two root three. Again, I can clean this up to one over root three. And we rationalize times top and bottom by root three. And we get root three over three. Okay, so now our reciprocals. So this is going to be cosecant theta. So the reciprocal of one half is two. Cosine, it's reciprocal of secant. And the reciprocal of this is two over root three. And again, I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by root three to rationalize it, which is two root three over three. Now, this one here, be careful. When you have something like this that you have rationalized, don't use this one because if I flip this, I'm gonna have a root three on the bottom and I'm gonna to have to rationalize again. Use this one because when I flip this one, this is gonna end up being a root three. Okay, and that's your answer. Okay, so now let's try an example. 
where maybe they give us a um, a something like this where they tell us the sign of the cosine we need to find, figure out everything else so let's say we have for this example again we're going to find all six uh, trig functions for theta okay all find all six trig functions for theta and let's say that um, given cotangent of theta is equal to three over two. So they're giving me the cotangent, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, first off, draw a right triangle. I'll put my theta here. Now, in terms of this, if I don't remember um, which, which is which, sometimes what might be easier is to think of it not as its inverse, but I mean, not as the reciprocal, but um, not as cotangent, but as the reciprocal, which is tangent. So let me just drag down what I need to find. Okay, I need to find my sine, my cosine, my tangent. I need to find the reciprocal of this, which is cosecant. The reciprocal of this, which is secant, and the reciprocal of this, which is cotangent. And I actually know this one. They gave me this. This is three over two. So if this is three over two, that means that this is two over three. So sometimes I might think of it easier in tangent form than maybe cotangent, okay? So now, if I think about my tangent, my tangent is opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent okay now i could have done it from here if i remembered it's adjacent over opposite but we might remember this easier so now i'm going to do pythagorean to find that so let's say i've got two squared plus three squared equals c squared so four plus nine i get 13 equals c squared so i get the square root of 13. this is the square root of 13. this is not a nice one that we see in our unit so far okay not going to clean up to any of the nice ones that we have but it doesn't matter because i know the ratios for all these okay so now that i know this i can find all of them well sine is opposite over hypotenuse so two over root 13 but again we need to rationalize multiply top and bottom by root 13. i get two root 13 over 13. cosine is three over root 13 again rationalize that and i get 3 root 13 over 13. now again don't flip these ones for this take this one so the reciprocal of this would be root 13 over 2. the reciprocal of this is root 13 over 3. and i just found all six of them knowing one of them and not knowing the angle okay so the next idea that i want to talk about is um if maybe we're in a different quadrant okay so for this example state the quadrant in which theta lies if cosecant theta, and this part that I'm covering right now is really more from 4.4. Um, so state the quadrant in which theta lies if cosecant theta is greater than zero and cotangent theta is less than zero. So first off, I'm going to rewrite this in terms of like sines and cosines, okay? Because um, that would be a little easier for me. So this is really, remember, cosecant is really the reciprocal of C doesn't go with C. So sine, the reciprocal of sine theta. So this is really 1 over sine theta is greater than 0. So what this means is basically, I want to know where is my sine 
positive. That's really what I want. Now over here, when I'm dealing with cotangent, okay, so just a little note, remember tangent was equal to sine over cosine. So this is saying that we're gonna have cosine theta over sine theta is less than zero, okay? So basically I want this to be negative. So if I want this to be negative, these cannot be the same signs because if they're both positive, I would get a positive. If these are both negative, I would get a positive. So I need my sine and cosine to be different signs. Okay, let me make this a little bigger. Okay, so this is how I think about these problems. I draw a quadrant, okay? And I think about where sine is positive, and I'm gonna highlight. So sine is positive. So sine, remember, is your y coordinate. So up here, my y coordinates are positive. Down here, my y coordinates are negative, okay? And so I want these to be positive. So I know for that, I need to be in either quadrant one or quadrant two. Now, for this one, I need my sine and cosine to be different signs, okay? Let me do it in here. Okay, so now I'm gonna be dealing with this part here. So here, my sine and cosine, my X and Y are both the same sign, so I'm not here. Here, I've got negative comma positive. So let me just kind of go like this. Here, negative negative, so that's not gonna be. Here, positive negative. So there's always two quadrants where something's positive and two quadrants where something's negative. So where do I have both shadings? Here. So my answer, what quadrant am I in? Even though I have no idea what the angle is, quadrant two, and that's your answer. Okay, so now let's try it, but now with um, a value for these, okay? So, for this example, um, given sine theta is equal to four fifths and tangent theta is less than zero, find your cosecant theta and your cosine theta. So they're not asking us to find them six, just these two. So where am I? What quadrant am I in? Now, in this situation, my sine is positive, okay? So let me just make that little note. Um, so this is telling me that my sine equals a positive, okay? So, Again, in my graph, your sign is your y value. So your y's are positive in either quadrant one or two, okay? Now, I want my tangent to be negative. So I want my tan to equal a negative. So that means that my X and my Y are different signs, okay? Because if they're the same, then I would have a negative over a negative or a positive over a positive, which would be a positive. So here, they're not different signs. Here, they are different signs, okay? So let me do this like this again. Again, here, they're going to be, it's going to be positive because it's a negative and a negative. Here, you're going to have different signs because it's positive, common, negative. So your tangents are gonna be negative here because your X and Y have different signs. Your tangents are gonna be positive here because your X and Y have the same sign. So I have to be here. My 
right triangle is in this quadrant. So let me draw, let me draw a different color. So I'm gonna draw a right triangle in this quadrant, okay? This is gonna be my theta. Now my sine is four over five. So sine is opposite and adjacent, sorry, opposite and hypotenuse. And I need to find my adjacent. Now we have to be careful. This is a three, four, five, but notice I'm going negative this way. So I'm actually gonna consider this a negative three. Your, this is positive four. Your hypotenuse is always positive. So your signs are either gonna be here. Here, this is always gonna be positive. So if I had drawn this down in this quadrant, my four would have been negative and my three would have been negative. But over here, this would have been a positive three and a negative four if I'm down here. So now we need to find our cosine and our cosecant. Okay, so the cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's gonna be a negative three over five. My cosecant, okay, my cosecant is the reciprocal of this. So we actually knew this because these are reciprocals. So this is five over four, and those are my answer. Now, last idea. Again, these last examples are kind of a little bit more from section 4.4. Um, so last one, find two answers such that, and we're going to do this twice, okay, such that um, zero degrees less than or equal to theta less than or equal to 360 degrees, and then we're going to do the same question so we're going to do it in radians. So zero degrees, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to two pi. So one time you're going to be giving me angles in degrees, two angles. The other time you're going to give me two angles in radians. Okay. And um, I'll just label and say that's the only one we're going to do. So this is going to be, let's say it's sine theta of negative root three over two. So basically, I want to know what angle, it's almost like, this is, this is really like inverse sine. What angle gives me this? Now we're not gonna put this in our calculator because we can do this knowing the unit circle, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my unit circle. And I've been giving you unit circles where I give you three little dots here so we kind of know where we are. So these are like my 30s, my 45s, my 60s, or my pi thirds, my pi fourths, my pi six. okay. So we're talking sine. Now, first off, sine's negative. So where is sine negative? Well, sine is negative down here. So my two answers are going to be one answer in this quadrant, one answer in this quadrant. Now, where is my sine? negative root three over two. So this one is long, short. Okay, that's not right. This is medium, medium. This one's gonna be short, long. This is where I am. And same on this side. These are the two points I'm at, okay? So just so we understand this point right here, is at negative one half comma negative root three halves. This point here is at positive one half negative root three halves. So you'll see that both of these have a y coordinate of negative root three halves. So both of these angles give me this sign, give me a negative root three halves. Now let's talk about these in terms of degrees. So if I'm thinking about these in terms of degrees, okay, this is zero, this is 180, this is back to 360, right? So this one would be my 60 degree, right? I'm going 60, but I'm going 60 below. So this one here is 200 and, 
40 degrees. That's going to be one answer that would have given me this as a sign. This one's 60 this way, shy of 360. So this one's going to be 300 degrees. So if they ask us for it between zero and 360 degrees, they're asking it for in, us to give it in degrees. And these are your degrees. If they ask us to do it in radians, okay, from zero to two pi, then where am I in terms of radian? Well, in terms of radians, these are pi thirds, okay? So here, this would be three pi thirds, and this would be six pi thirds, which really cleans up to a pi and a two pi. So here, where am I? I'm at four pi thirds, and here I'm at five pi thirds. So these would be my answers, my two answers in radians, and these are my two answers in degrees. Okay? Okay, so that's the end of our notes for today.